um, Kitty Cat Kid, and um, this is Paul the Snake Whisperer. We are talking about snakes. And so our motto, what we try and do, okay, as I said to you earlier, we catch snakes from people's yards. So basically we try and educate rather than eradicate. So do you know what that means? So we'd rather go out and educate people, okay, not to kill them and we can relocate them rather than people pick up a shovel and whack it on the head. So my job, okay, one of them is basically go out and remove snakes from people's yards, as I said, and we let them go in people's, basically back out in the bush. Oh. But the other thing we do, like people your age, okay, we go and do birthday parties and we rock up with lots of reptiles and the kids love it. Um, do snakes chase you? <clears throat> no, snakes don't chase you, okay? A lot of people seem to think that snakes chase you, but they don't, okay? Oh. If you try to catch them or kill them, they will defend themselves and arc up, and they will strike, but they oh. won't chase you. But a lot of people seem to think that tiger snakes will chase you. You hear a lot of people, and they come and talk to me, and they tell me that they've been chased by tiger snakes. Really? And generally they're running away from the tiger snake, and the tiger snake is chasing them, and they're keeping up with them. So I always ask them, is the snake on a motorbike? <laughs> but no, we'll show you later, okay, that tiger snakes don't chase you. How do snakes hear and smell? How do snakes hear and smell? Yeah, okay, well, as you can see, no it's got no ears. Yeah. No, so they don't have any external ears or inner ears, okay? Yeah. So they use their tongue a lot, okay? Because that's what senses the, senses the air. So that's how they know what they can eat. Oh. Okay? And they have pips on the side of their mouth, as you can see there, okay? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah down right? there. I can see and they that. sense the vibration through the ground. All right? So what happens is they get the vibra vibration through the ground, okay? And they're in their jaw and on their jawbone, okay? Mm -hmm. That, on the it actually sends a signal to their brain. Oh. Okay. Wow. And that's how that works. So they can't. They don't actually have ears, but they can still do a lot of things that you and I can do without external ears. What sort of snakes do we have here in Perth? We have quite a few in Perth. Okay. Our main two that we have, which are, are nasty snakes, as most people call them. Okay, they're not very nice snakes. They're bitey snakes. Okay, which we have the dew guy, which is a brown snake, oh. and we have the tiger snake, okay? And they're the most two common ones, okay? Wow. We have a lot more than that, but they're probably the most two that people come across. Sometimes you come across the odd python or a death adder and a couple other different types of snakes. Oh. And most of the tiger snakes you'll find around the swampy areas, okay, like wetlands, yeah. okay? So, I was speaking to your mum earlier, so they find them around the wetlands there, and dew guides, okay? They're basically for anywhere through re residential area. Now, do you know what a dew guide's nickname is? No. Nope. They call it the mobile mousetrap. Wow. And you know, they call it that because it's always on the go, okay, it's always on the move, oh. okay? So basically, it'll go from house to house and eat all your mice, that's what it does, loves mice. What should we do if, um, like in, um, we will see a, um, poisonous snake? If you see a venomous somewhere? snake in your yard, what you would do, you'd go and tell mum and dad, all right, and tell mum and dad there's a snake in the back yard so you can keep an eye on it, okay? So and then, then you And then you call the snake catcher, all right, like myself, you can come around and remove the snake and relocate it to a safe place. Um, what should we do if um, we get bitten or something? And um, then what is the first aid for um, snake bite? Snake bite. Okay, so if you ever get bitten by a snake, okay, like over here, you're not allowed to, you're not allowed to suck the poison out, you're not allowed to bite it or anything like that, not squeeze it, not wipe it, not wash it with water, not put ice on it. Okay, we've got to apply a pressure bandage. Okay, so you've got to apply a pressure bandage on the limb. So if it's on your leg or on your arm, right, and you go all the way up your limb, okay, and you can put a splint on it, you try and put a splint on your limb, and obviously try and fold your arm like you've broken your arm and put a sling on it. Or, um, but the main thing, the main thing besides that is obviously you need to call for help and you've got to stay calm. Where do snakes, snakes go um, inside winter? In winter? Yeah. Okay, so in winter time, what's well, because they're reptiles, okay? So they don't like the cold, so they'll go and hibernate. So they'll go under things. You know, like say suburbia, for example, like where people live, like if they've got a lot of stuff in their shed and got mice holes, some snakes will actually live down the mice hole all during winter underneath somebody's shed, okay? Until spring comes. And in the bush, they'll go under tin, they'll go down logs, go down holes, and they'll hibernate until it warms up. Um, why do snakes come into um, this yard or somewhere. Into the yard? In the yard. Okay, so it can be several reasons, okay? Because a lot of development going around in the metro area, which means, you know, it's a lot of houses go up, so they, they knock down a lot of bush. So what happens is they've got nowhere to go. Oh. So where do they go? They go to, the, go to a household. Sometimes they're just passing by, it's just unlucky. Other times, 
you know, say you've got a, say you've got a problem with some mice, okay, you've got birds and mice, well maybe they'll hang around because they get a free feed. And what do snakes eat? Eat? Well, okay, now this guy here, okay, this guy will eat, eat rats, okay, full grown sort of rats he'll eat, wow. okay. Uh, and he'll eat mice as well, they're the main two things that we will feed him. So, okay. And the carpet up there, right, he, uh, she will eat. Uh, she'll eat rats as well, sort of medium sort of sized rats, as well as full grown mice. Wow. Okay, now when we feed our animals, okay, now we're not allowed to feed them live animals, okay, so they actually have to physically be dead, okay, so we basically defrost them out of the freezer and uh, we, we thaw them out and give them to them the next day. Who is more scared, do you think, us, of them or them of us? Well, sometimes it's a bit of both, you know, so snakes actually do quite seem to be attracted to humans sometimes, okay, or to people. Yeah, so and generally when people snake. see a snake, right, generally people get scared, okay, they have phobias of snakes, okay. Mm -hmm. So, but then again, sometimes the snake can be scared too, but generally it's the people that are scared of them, the snakes. Do snakes have eyelids? No, snakes don't have eyelids, okay. How, um, will they then uh, sleep with their they, eyes How do they open? sleep? They just curl up and go to sleep. Wow, so like... So their eyes are, yeah, their eyes are ooh, always open. Yep, yep, they are. Well, no, Not like a crocodile, because a crocodile does have a lid that comes over its eye. Okay, snakes don't have that. Yeah, but when so a snake like... sheds, when a snake sheds, okay, its eyes will go white, okay? And when it sheds, the actual skin does go over its eyes as well. Oh, wow. So when a snake sheds its skin, all right, it's got the little eyes in the actual skin. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Do snakes make nice pets? Well, snakes do make good pets, okay? But unfortunately, okay, the way the licensing structure is like, you have to be 18 to actually hold a, to have a snake as a pet, okay? So most, oh, I know it's sad, I know, but you know, a lot of people though, depending on how many times you wash dad's car and, and back in the house and make your bed, generally the parents put the light to get the snake in their name, okay? With a bit of bribery, you know? So yeah, a bit of housework goes on, okay? And generally on that, okay, you can have two snakes on that, which is Stimson Python and the Carpet Python, okay? And basically the Carpet Python gets a lot bigger than Stimmy. Stimmy only gets about a metre long. Carpets can go anywhere from two metres to two and a half metres. They get quite a big snake, wow. okay? But the first snake, a Stimson Python is ideal. Great snake, robust, really easy to look after. Do you have a, do you have a dog or a cat? Two dogs. Do you have two dogs? And how often do you feed your dog? Every single day. I hope so. And night. And night time. So you feed them during the day and at night. Yep. Well, when you have a snake, you don't have to feed it that often. Why not? Because uh, well, it doesn't need it. So I might give, say, not this guy, but say one of the Stimson pythons, I might give it a mouse today. And I won't have to feed that now for a couple of weeks if it's an adult. And generally what I do, when I feed him again, I'll wait till it goes to the toilet and do a number two, and then it'll get fed again. Paul is now um, telling us a bit more about the tiger snake. Very poisonous. Venomous. Now, very venomous. Venomous. Now yep. I am now moving out of the picture, please. Okay. Well, right, we've got a tiger snake here. It's a local tiger snake. Western tiger. Um, as I said earlier, just going to show you that um, they don't chase you when they're out. Uh, as you can see, this is a Western tiger. Uh, as we said earlier, uh, had no intention of chasing me. Yes, he'll clear himself up, as you can see now, to defend himself. Okay, if he feels threatened. Um, but I let him go, as you know, the photographer will bolt in a minute if I let him go. Um, as you can see, he doesn't want to go anywhere, except for that direction. He'll flare up, defend himself, as he does, arcs up like a cobra. Okay, now all our, all our um, lapids here, or tiger snakes, are all front fanged animal. This one's quite a pretty one. As you can see, quite yellow, quite easy to identify. Um, yeah, as you, can, as you can clearly see, not very happy at the minute. So what we do, rather than stress him out, is basically we put him in the hoop bag, in he goes, not going to play the game, so we'll just lift him in there, drop him in there, bingo, all done Red Rover. So basically what we do, we only twist the bag so he can't get out, and then we tie the bag up, you can see the other end of the tank, that's it, bingo, on the ground. And now what we do is basically he'll get relocated. Paste him back in there like that. We'll do my little clip. We we'll use these little clips just as an extra safety precaution. Put over the bag. 
clip it up, absolutely got no chance of getting out. Put him in there, and he's all ready to be released. Now, this is Paul again, and now we are talking about a dew guy snake. That's and right. Now, I might just move over a bit <laughs> with, with my new belt. <laughs> okay, so now we've got a dew guy. Okay, this one's quite a big fella. This one's caught local again. Quite a, this is actually quite a big snake for a dugite. They do get quite big over the meter mark, about a meter and a half plus. This guy is quite big. Yep. They're quite a big snake, and he's head straight for the wall. So obviously doesn't like being out in the open. Like I said, this is quite big for a dugite for around here. They don't generally get this big. I do generally get a couple around the six and a half, seven foot mark every year, which we do. Now, a lot of people say leopards can't jump up on, uh, like come back up on their body, and they can, because they actually S around and climb up, and a lot of people have been bitten on the hand for that reason. Oh. And dugites will vary a color too, you know. Uh, this one's quite a plain, it's got quite a dark head. They'll have spots, they'll have speckles, they have stripes, they vary so much, and that's where a lot of people are uh, misidentifying what they are. The lighter in color, not as big, skinny, and dugites are quite well known to be skinny. He's, obviously she's not, so, and do you have a lot of black spots on them as well? Do you guys the wall up? Quite heat, this snake. It possibly could get over that wall, yes. Right. If he really wanted to, where that pillar is there, if he decided to go over there, see a lot of snakes, these snakes don't generally climb, but if you have bushes and trees, I've had snakes that have actually been up on roller doors before, and they've been dugites, because they get they go up on boxes, whatever people leave in their, in their uh, carport. But if you have trees next to it, say there's some shrubs here, he'd probably get into the shrubs and go over the fence. Wow. Yes, he would. So they're not known to climb, but they can climb. So I guess this is time to say. Oh wow, that looks like this group will, looks like it's the day. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Paul, for this loveliness. That's right. Like today. I won't whisper at you, okay? Shh. 